What's up guys, Bill here. In this video, I'm going to review my day of trading QQQ. Uh, pretty wild day on QQQ, a big V pattern, uh, which we know can pay, you know, big, uh, big money in multiple directions. And, um, you know, a, a huge range and trip back and forth to basically finish where we started. So, um, coming into today, QQQ and SPY were both inside days. Um, you guys know I love inside day setups. So I was really paying special attention to these indexes and their previous days, highs and lows, which on my charts are indicated by purple lines. And um, I also came into the day thinking, you know, for downside, I was gonna favor SPY and for long side, I was gonna favor Qs. The reason for that was oil's been selling off. Um, and when oil sells off, tech tends to have strength. When oil dips, tech rips, as they say. And you know, SPY has more, um, you know, uh, exposure to oil names while Q doesn't. And Q has more exposure to tech names than SPY. Uh, so, but that didn't really happen, right? So we started the day with oil and tech and I, or oil down, you know, 1%, one and a half percent. I was watching Exxon is kind of the, the one oil company I keep my eyes on. Also, you can watch XLE, the um, energy ETF, but they were selling to start the day, but tech didn't really rip off the open or have that much strength off the open. And so Q's actually ended up being a little weaker than SPY with semis selling off really hard at the open. And so I started my day trying to short SPY and I made some money on it, but it wasn't as smooth as it could have been. And I missed and I got stopped out really early and I missed this awesome Q setup. So here you can see our opening range with the orange lines, 15 minute opening range. I'm on the 10 minute chart. This is where I use my confirmation on opening range and inside day trades. I look for a 10 minute close outside the range. And if it's closing extended, I look for the retest. On this candle, look, we get that nice 10 minute close and then right back testing almost to the cent. And then we get the fade, big fade and a little bear flag and more, you know, just this trade would have paid, would have made my whole day on one trade, but I missed it, right? Uh, because I was trying to short SPY coming in with the thesis that if oil started selling to start the day, SPY would be an easier short and Qs would be an easier long. Um, so that kind of cost me a little bit having that, uh, you know, thesis kind of cost me. And later I had to kind of chase a little bit on Qs, which I, you know, which it pains me to admit. But basically I ended up having to uh, enter in this flag and test of this nine EMA on the five minute, which is an okay entry. And, you know, as you can see, it did work out for me. Um, but you know, it, it, it's not the greatest, right? Like this could have started being a base and we could have curled and ripped. Um, but it, it did work out, but it wasn't an A plus entry and it could have been just so much smoother had I got in earlier and played that opening range breakdown and been stress free, really big mover. Um, but. I'm uh, made up for that later, shortly later, when we started to bottom here. Remember, I talked about how uh, Q's was an inside day, and here is our inside day low. We opened pretty close to the high, and we came all the way down the range. Now, this is a $5 range of its inside day. Um, when inside day setups move like this where they open nor near one side of the range and reject it and span the whole range the likelihood that you're going to get continuation especially if the range is large obviously use common sense um but the likelihood that you're going to get some continuation and a breakdown after this huge move down to the bottom of the range is so low guys like just think of your basic risk to reward, okay? So that's one aspect. But we also have other confluence levels down here with this 355 negative GEX, major negative GEX. Remember, I talk about the negative GEX magnets. When they draw price and they're successful in drawing price a long way and there's a strong level, they tend to snap back. Now, this didn't snap back. We consolidated and then moved out. But that's just one more thing to consider. And then also, this is a large bullish dark pool print here at 354.80. So for me to even start to think about more downside down here on Qs, I would want to have see all of this be cleared. Breakthrough, retest, fade, targeting 353.60, another bullish dark pool print, and this 353 uh, three positive GEX 
resistance, okay? Propellant. But we never got that. What did we get instead? Let's look at a couple things and why I went long down here uh, on the trade that ended up making my day. On the five minute, you can see that we can't close one single candle under this inside day low. That is perfect respect. But that coupled with seller exhaustion on the little bit higher time frames is what sold me on taking a long position. And you can see it on the 10 a little bit, but it's even better on the 15. And this is where I saw it. All right, look at this, guys. We're selling. We got nice volume increase here. We flag a little bit, lower volume consolidation. We get our next leg down on higher volume. Then we get a compressed candle with a, a hammer, basically, with a leg down on the same, just slightly even higher volume. That is a sign of seller exhaustion. All this volume that accounted for this huge move down is now doing this. This is the result. That is a ton of effort with a little, very little result and, you know, a disappointing result. OK, wick down to sellers stepping in. Now, you could have got in right on this candle with a pretty safe entry. Um, yeah, you're, you know, 50 cents above the psych level, uh, but you're only, you know, 30 cents above your inside day level here. If you're really patient, maybe you could wait to one more pullback and get down here. Or maybe you wanted to see one whole nother 15 minute candle close. Well, you could have seen this candle, another wick down and this time closing green. All right. If you weren't in here, you got to get in here. This is the spot. OK, so you've got three wicks down now. We're getting a little centipede action. If you follow me on Twitter, I've talked about the porcupine, which is candles with a bunch of wicks up in a row on different time frames. Uh, signaling that there are sellers taking control here and most likely we're going to see some downside. This is the inverse of that. This is centipede. Multiple candles with legs down like a centipede. This is showing buyers stepping in and pay attention to the volume too. You can't just look at candles blindly and see, oh, wick, let me buy. You want to see it backed by the volume. So this is a buy signal down here. And look at that move, right? I mean, it takes the rest of the day, but my contracts, I played some zero DTEs down here, small size with a risk of, you know, can it break down in uh, any of these levels or is this all going to hold? And they went 900% <laughs> by the end of the day. I was mostly all out around here. I had like 90% of my risk off here at 358, which coming into the day was a gamma level. The gammas updated a little bit later into the day and 357 became the major gamma and look at how it held it. So the gamma updated um, and I was in my runners and I saw this and I just stayed in my runners and they went huge. And the that's the power of runners, guys. Um, I took another trade today and I lost on it. And we'll talk about that too. I kept my call runners. It was 10% of my original position, okay? Um, and I used 10% of my account on a trade. So it's 1% of my account I'm still in. Um, but I decided to go short because we got up here into the 618 and you guys know I like my 618s. And so I went short, um, but I actually went short on SPY. Um, so let's sw switch over to SPY. They would have both been losers and they both triggered semi close to each other around the same time. Q's was a little later, but I played the 618 and I got in. Um, I didn't get down to the touch of the 618 and here's why. I have a risk to reward setup where I like to be stopped out if it's about a 50 to 60 cent move against me and I'm looking for wins of a dollar more a move so I can build in that two to one risk to reward minimum. Um, and so as you can see here, the 618, the gap between that and the 786, which is kind of where I would play, I would stop out on the chart, a close above the 786. Um, it's a large gap. It's 68 cents. So that extra 18 cents, you know, you add that to 423.70, you're up at 480, uh, 423.88. At that point, I see this Gex here, 424, and I'm just basically getting in on the touch of that. Um, and my stop is either a 25% hard stop on one day expiration contracts or 20, uh, or a close over, um, this, 786, whichever comes first. In this instance, I stopped out around here on this big rip candle up, but I lost on 
Um, this 618, which is one of my favorite setups, it has about a 70% win rate. Today was one of the losses. But here's the thing with position sizing, it, sizing and risk to reward and letting your runners run. While I was in puts here, I had that small tiny bit of calls left for, on QQQ. It was 1% of my account at that point. On this trade, I entered with 10% of my account, 25% hard stop. So when I got stopped out, I lost 2.5% of my account on this trade, okay? During the same time, those QQQ calls that I had that are only 1% of my account added 9% to my account when they got up here because they went 900%, okay? So you don't have to size huge. You don't have to be a hero. You don't have to over risk and overextend yourself if you're willing to let your runners run. now. What did I do in queues when I had sold most of my position? I mean, remember, I'm entering down here. So even with zero DTEs, I'm out 90% of my position here. Pulling even down to here is nowhere near stopping me out. Um, I don't recall exactly how much they were up still when it wicked down this far, but it was probably comfortable, like at least 30 or 40% up still. So I have no reason to cut them. When I have runners like that, I put a uh, break even stop on them. So if it would have kept pulling around maybe here-ish, it probably would have stopped out. But otherwise, I have no reason to care. I don't even look at them. Um, I even trade against them, right? I took puts on SPY because I like that setup. I like the 618. It works very well. It's one of my most reliable setups. Um, and I took it still, even though I still had some confidence we could go up. I had calls open. I'm still taking puts, right? I'm trying to get these great entries, the highest risk to reward entries. And this is something that happens to me frequently. I'll have calls at one level and then I'll enter a short later and the calls will still be going and the puts will still be going, right? And whatever ones play out the best wins. And I have a tight stop, 25%, like I said. Um, so. This is just a good example of how important risk management is. And risk management isn't just your sizing. It isn't just where you stop out. It's also having the patience and conviction to see your winners through and not getting scared and selling, you know, 80% of your position for 20%. And then your stop loss is 30%. You're, you're going to have to be right 80% of the time to turn a profit. And it's hard to be right 80% of the time. Why not have some patience, let your winners run and you only have to be right 30% of the time and you can still be a profitable trader. That's what it's all about. You gotta maximize your risk to reward by patience through you know, holding your winners. Uh, my technique is once I take my first big scale, I set that break even stop. It's stress-free at that point. If it stops out, it stops out. But I don't let things go green to red um, and I wanna try to hold them as long as possible. And I find that's a good middle ground where you're not over risking, you're not setting yourself up to watch a green trade go red and maybe trigger you to do some stupid things like average down, hold really long, thinking it's going to come back because now you're upset. Um, it's kind of that nice middle ground between, you know, avoiding those triggers while also giving yourself a good chance to catch those one, two, three, four hundred percent wins on small position sizes. You know, I'm not holding my entire position thinking I'm going to hit 800 percent on every trade. You know, that is unrealistic. Um, and don't let people on Twitter with their Weeble cards and all that influence you and make you think that's an everyday thing that people do. It's not. But if you got, you know, 10% of your position, 1% of your account in those runners and you can let them go five, six hundred percent, that's five, six percent on your account just with that tiny position. So that is very important and something that's really to help me take my trading to the next level, you know, going from having one, two percent days to sometimes now having 10, 15, 20 percent days just because of these runners and letting, you know, taking advantage when you get a move like this, we don't always see moves like this, the big V it's a rare thing, right? On the indexes. A lot of times you get more chop, more limited range. You know, when you get days like this, you got to let those contracts run guys. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know, leave a comment, find me on Twitter, send a DM and I'll help you out.